In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your live stream to YouTube using the Windows PC software. In this video, we then are getting your stream started to YouTube Live using our live cam cameras. I'm going to show you how you can use the PC software to manage your camera remotely and get the stream started or maintain the stream. If you have a slow or unstable internet connection that keeps dropping your stream, you can conveniently use the software anywhere you are as long as your computer has an internet connection and the internet connection where the camera is is available and the P2P status is online for your camera. So this is extremely convenient. Again, if you are remotely away from where the camera is live streaming and you need to either manage the stream by changing some settings or if you need to restart the stream because it's dropped and YouTube it hasn't restarted it yet. So what I'm going to do is use this stream key as I've been showing you in the other videos to enable my stream. But instead of going to the web browser directly, I first need to open up the PC software. So I'm going to do that now. It's going to automatically log in because I've already installed the software and used it before. And here we can see I have the software open and I need to add my camera. So I'm going to come up here and click the add button. And then it's very important. You need to go to do the method to add and change it from IP slash domain to the SN for again, for supporting devices with the P2P. So I'm going to name it. I'm going to call it my live cam. And then you need to find the serial number either by scanning the P2P code using your phone on your camera. Uh, using the label on the box sometimes we'll have it on there or you will need to get it from the web interface to follow this video so you want to have added the camera to your smart pss software if you're following this video after you've already set up your stream or you want to have that p2p code ready and saved in your phone or something like that so you can add it to the software so i'm going to go ahead and get my p2p code and i'm going to put it into the software in a moment so I'm going to go ahead and paste my serial number or P2P code into the software. Here you can see it. We're going to obfuscate that so you can't log into our camera. And then I need to use the username and password. Again, this credentials can be found on the label on the top of your camera's box or in the email if we sent that information to you directly. So I've entered in that username and password. I have my serial number here, which is my P2P code for this particular camera. And then I need to click the add button. So your software may automatically log in to the camera if everything is correct. And again, the camera has an internet connection with the P2P code online, or if it didn't automatically connect, then you need to click the door with the arrow icon here to manually log in. So I'm going to click that. It says, are you sure you want to log in? I'm going to click OK. And then within a few moments, I should have this offline status change from a gray offline to a green online status. You saw that happen. If you get a error, then you want to double check that your camera is online and the P2P status is also online. And you unfortunately may need to go to the location of the camera to make that happen. So now I have an online status, which means the camera is accessible from my software. So if I were to go back to the new tab or click the plus icon and then click the live view button to go into the live cam page, I can click and drag my live cam in here and I can see the video from the live camera option. It just so happens to be a smart camera. So it has the IVS overlaid and I can get rid of that by unchecking that. So that is another neat feature. If you do have IVS rules enabled and you want to see them, you can see them in the PC software. But to get to the actual web interface of your camera so you can manage your stream, you do need to click the plus icon or go back to the new page if you have a tab open already. And then go to the device CFG page from the home page of the software. So I'm going to click on that. Here I can see I have a green button on my live cam. It means my live cam is logged into by the software and I'm able to access it. So I'm going to click on it. And it may take a few moments depending on how fast your internet connection is to pull this information from your camera. But you're going to want to wait for it to be able to pull this information before you're able to click any of these buttons. So if I wanted to manage any of these settings from the PC software, I could from the camera and network pages, but in order to get to the RTMP and P2P settings, I do need to go into the link to web feature. So this is a very unique feature for this software. When I click this link to web button, what it's going to do is do some kind of internet magic and get me directly to the web interface of my camera, no matter where this camera is in the world. So it is going over the internet, so it might take a few moments for your internet connection and your camera to start talking to each other you'll see that the login menu comes up. 
So again, I'm using the login credentials that I use to add the camera to the software to then log into the web interface. So I've entered in the username admin and the password for my camera, and then I can click the login button to log in. So again, this is internet magic, right? So it's, it's actually accessing my camera using that link to web feature from the PC, and I'm now in the web interface of my camera as though I was there at the camera's location. So the next thing I need to do is go into the setting tab to get my stream started. And then under the network page, I'm gonna to wanna to go to the access platform page by clicking on it. And of course we already have an online P2P status because we were able to use the link to web feature from the software. But if you're there on location and you don't have an online status, then of course you will wanna make sure that you get an online status, either submit a support ticket or check our troubleshooting section if you can't get an online status. Then I need to go to the RTMP tab within the web interface and then I need to enable the RTMP stream. I need to choose my stream type. Again, you're gonna to wanna to usually choose the mainstream, which is gonna be either your 4K or 2K stream, depending on which camera you purchased. And then your address type, you are gonna to wanna to select the custom address type. It's going to enable this text box down here and allow you to enter in your stream. My browser just so happens to have my stream already saved, but I'm gonna show you, I need to hit the Windows key on my keyboard because the software here is in full screen and covering my Windows taskbar. So the Windows button will allow me to get to my taskbar. And then I'm gonna open up my notepad where I have my stream key as well. So you're gonna to wanna to click and drag your mouse while holding the click to highlight it. And then right click for our tech savvy users. This would be a control C on your keyboard. You click copy and then come back into your web interface of your camera. And again, control V for our tech savvy users or right click and click paste. So you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to some really important things here. I'm just gonna go over those real quickly. In your stream, you are gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't have a doubled up RTMP and there's no ad additional pieces of punctuation here at the beginning. We have had some customers use you know, two RTMPs or two colons or too many slashes here. And then another common mistake is not putting a slash or putting too many slashes between the live and your stream key. So your stream key should consist of four digits and five sections. So we have four digits, uh, letters and numbers in each section, and then we have five total sections. So very important to make sure that you look out for some of these common mistakes into your RTMP stream. It should look something similar to this. And yes, we will be resetting this RTMP key after we make this video so you can't hijack our stream. So I've already copied and pasted this custom address into the custom address field. And to get my stream started, I can simply click the save button. It's gonna prompt me and say, after enabling the RTMP stream, your video and audio will be pushed to the third party server, in this case, YouTube. Please make sure it can be trusted. We trust YouTube. So we're gonna click the okay button to get the stream started. And within a few moments, it should say save succeeded, which means that the camera is now attempting to send its stream using the RTMP URL that you sent. You can go back to your YouTube Studio Live page and it should start streaming within a few moments. So you can see here after clicking the enable button, after clicking OK, the excellent connection is here and we have the live stream from my camera. If I were to go back to the live page, we should see the same video. Now there are a few things to note that if you're unable to get your stream started, then you will need to check a few settings and I'll show you those in a moment. But here you can see that we have the same picture in YouTube Studio as we do here in the camera's web interface. So that's stream was successfully started. Now, if you're unable to get the stream started or YouTube is showing you some errors, then you do need to go into your settings again, go into the camera tab this time, and then into video. So YouTube is very particular about their encoding settings that are set for streams. So the encode mode needs to be H.264, preferably with the smart codec off. You may need to optimize your resolution, frame rate, and bit rate depending on your internet connection. And YouTube will sometimes tell you what it's expecting. Now you don't necessarily need to go for their recommendations because usually their bit rates are pretty high. Uh, usually you can use roughly half of what YouTube is suggesting to get a proper stream going. And then last but not least in the audio tab, you do need to have audio enabled, 
and then set the encode mode to AAC. If you don't really want audio, then you can simply just turn your microphone volume to zero and it won't actually have any audio in your stream. But it's very important. You do need to have audio enabled, set to AAC. You can of course change the sampling frequency if you would like. And then in the video tab, you do need to have it set to encode mode H264. And then like I said, you may need to optimize your resolution, frame rate, and bit rate depending on the internet connection where the camera is. Hopefully this video helped you use the PC software to manage your camera either while you're on site or remotely using the link to web feature and got your stream online or if you needed to restart your stream. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.